Why do we need high voltage power lines for the transmission of electricity? The first electrical utilities for homes worked on DC current. Some people thought AC was too dangerous. Actually, AC has many advantages over DC. One of the main problems that came up when trying to feed a whole city with a DC generator was the voltage drop across the long lines running from the generator to distant houses. Although it was possible to use somewhat thicker cables, they had some resistance anyway, that is, they opposed the flow of electric current and they introduce a considerable loss. Take a look at a simple law which rules the current flow in a circuit, Ohm's law. According to this law, the current going through a circuit is directly proportional to the voltage and inversely proportional to the resistance. If we apply it, we will realize the impossibility of using a low voltage to power a house 10 kilometers away from the generator. To easily apply this formula, simply exclude the factor you want to know about and watch the arithmetic operation you must perform. If we want to know the voltage, we will put it in another color and now the formula will tell us what to do with the other factors. For example, if we want to know the voltage, we put it in red and the formula will tell us that we must multiply the current by the resistance. If we want to know the current, we put it in red and the formula will indicate that we must divide the voltage by the resistance and, finally, if we are interested in clearing the resistance, we will divide the voltage by the current. Suppose we use a generator that delivers 100 volts and has the capacity to deliver 1000 watts of power. Now imagine that we buy an electric heater that consumes exactly 1000 watts of power when connected to 100 volts. Now connect the heater directly to the generator output. The heater will operate at full power when connected directly to the generator. A 1000 watt heater that requires 100 volts to operate, according to Ohm's law, will be drawing a current of 10 amps and will have a resistance of 10 ohms. Now, suppose that the owner of a house located 10 kilometers away from the generator requests electrical service and the connection is made using 10 gauge wire. The 10 gauge cable has a resistance of 3.28 ohms per kilometer. Two wires are required, one going from the generator to the heater and the other going back to the generator. Each wire is 10 kilometers long, so the round trip is 20 kilometers. This means that the cable will have a total resistance of 3.28 multiplied by 20, that is 65.6 .6 ohms. If we now connect the same heater to the end of the line and add the resistance of the 10 ohm heater to the resistance of 65.6 .6 ohm cable, we will have a total of 75.6 ohms. Using Ohm's law, we can calculate that 100 volts provided by the generator and applied to a load of 75.6 ohms will produce a current of 1.32 amps. 
The heater, which has a resistance of 10 ohms, will be receiving only 13.2 volts at its input terminals. Since the amount of power in watts can be calculated by multiplying the applied voltage, in this case 13.2 volts by the current flowing through the heater, 1.32 amps, the result will be 17.42 watts, too little for it to work. Since the generator is supplying 100 volts to the heater, the rest of the voltage will appear across the resistance of the cable, that is, 100 volts produced by the generator minus 13.2 volts appearing across the heater, we will have an 86.8 drop across the wires, 43.4 volts across each cable causing the cables to hit the air without any benefit whatsoever, using up 114.58 watts. How can we achieve a more efficient power transmission? The solution is to use alternating current and a pair of transformers, one next to the generator which will now be an alternator, in order to raise the voltage a hundred times, converting the 100 volts of the alternator to 10,000 volts. Now the 10 gauge cables will carry 10,000 volts over 10 kilometers. At the other end of the cables, we will have another transformer that steps the voltage down to 100 volts, and to that transformer we will connect our heater. Now the heater gets 100 volts with a 10 amp current, just as if it were connected directly to the alternator. The result of raising the alternator voltage 100 times is that a current of only one tenth of a watt is required to carry 1000 watts since watts are calculated by multiplying the amps by the volts. That way, as the resistance of the cable in the round trip will be 65.6 ohms, the voltage drop for one tenth of an amp will be 65.6 ohms multiplied by one tenth of an amp, which gives us 6.56 volts all along the line. If we subtract them from the 10,000 coming from the first transformer, we will have 10,000 volts minus 6.56 volts, so stepping the voltage down 100 times in the second transformer will result in 99.93 .93 volts and the heater works normally. It is easily possible to feed several houses with a single transformer and when new users come about, transformers can be added to the high voltage lines in order to step the voltage down 100 times, thus obtaining 100 volts and feed another group of houses. In summary, the 100 volts produced by the alternator are stepped up 100 times by means of a transformer proportionally reducing the amperage necessary to transmit the energy through long cables, virtually without losing any voltage. At the point of use of the energy, another transformer is employed to lower the voltage once again to the 100 volts necessary for the household. The same applies when sending energy over longer distances, stepping the voltage up a thousand times to reduce the losses caused by the cable length.
The actual voltages used are of the order of uh, values commonly used in homes and industry, such as 110, 220, 440 volts, as the case may be, using the appropriate transformers. We used a value rounded to 100 volts for the sole purpose of simplifying the calculations. I hope this video will be useful to you. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel.